Rhapsody. Can you believe Bohemian Rhapsody on a little thing? Quite sad. Quite sad. That is quite amazing. Uh, who else? Who else of you? Uh... Um, Prince Harry. <laughs> what did you do? He, he, re he recorded his book, uh, his audio book, in the studio. He lives in Central. Um, that must be interesting. Does he uh, interact with you in a special way because no, I, you're an OBE? I was nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> he, he just used my space a bit. Uh, but we met. He was, he was very, very uh, hospitable. He was nice. um, Chris Martin spent a day there once. Um, yeah. I've been working with um, Drama called uh, Franklin Vanderbilt. Um, I love Franklin. Everybody here knows who Franklin is. <laughs> of course, you know, um, I've been uh, approached. I've been uh, something I have been working on is, is, a, is a remix project in, in Dolby Atmos for a, uh, a big name band, but I'm not a, allowed to disclose who that is. This much. Oh. If we guess, will you tell us? No. <laughs> you can get through it. Okay, if it goes. Okay, it's not the Beatles. Yeah, there you go. It's not. There you go. That's what you got. Uh, go ahead, please. Good morning, Mr. Salam. Thank you for your music. Uh, my name is Sergey, I'm from Russia, from a band Lenin and Friends. And my question is about. Uh, Russian classical music. Uh, do you like Russian classical composers? Thank you. Uh, was Rimsky Korsakov Russian? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I love Shahrazad. Oh. No, I, I grew up. I grew up with classical music. The, 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 my my dad never stopped playing uh, classical music, and that that was very valuable to me. To, to have, uh, knowledge of. Uh, you know, I, could, I, I think to this day I could, I could uh, hear a 10 seconds of a Beethoven symphony and say, oh, that's number three, that's number six. Okay. So, yeah. And uh, I also had musical training. I loved piano, flute, so I loved to read and write music. So it was important, very important to, to what happened in the 80s. Was Rachmaninoff a Russian composer? Rachmaninoff. But man, yeah. Tchaikovsky, yeah. Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky, yeah. It's the most famous. Exactly. Yeah, but um, a lot of people don't realize that uh, it's, uh, Eric Carmen's uh, All By Myself is actually a right man on the piano for church. No, for no. Thank you very much. Thank you. much appreciate that hey Ellen hey I was wondering if you could take a moment please share maybe your top two memories of working deeply the Abbey Road beat up session what's top two memories like top what's something that happened at, at Abbey Road when you worked with Beatles uh, it'll be in the book it was uh, <laughs> <laughs> this will be a trailer I, I, I think um, just just being a, being there to watch the, the incredible talent of those four guys. Um, did you know what you were witnessing at the time? Did you feel it like this is something incredibly special, or it was the Beatles? Yeah, of course it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, just just. Uh, Having the opportunity, having to this day, I look back and say, "My God, I was there for the last two weeks as I was watched watching you take this." I cherish that memory. And will always cherish that. Memory. Uh, a while back, Alan, you uh, changed course just a little bit and released a, an EDM-style record called "The Final Path." Has anyone a valid path. a valid path a valid path? Who's familiar with that? That is one. If you ever go on a road trip, put on a valid path 
I don't think there is much better highway music um, than than that record. Yeah, you, know, you you worked on that uh, with your son, correct? Yeah, Jeremy, my son was involved in that, as well as David Gilmore, mm -hmm. played a nice solo on the track. Um, but uh, it was essentially an, an experiment. It, um, I, I wanted to try and reach a younger audience, so to, to go more towards uh, EDM. Tr trance was the, uh, was the buzzword at the time. Yeah. Uh, it was vaguely successful in some respects, but unsuccessful in others. Sure. I, I went back to the old formula after that. Right. Um, but it's it's still, I mean, in, in my opinion, it's one of, uh, all of the albums are great, but in my opinion, I'll listen to it all the time. I love the record. Um, the cool thing about uh, the Gilmore track on it is, I remember, Alan, we were working on, uh, you had said to me, this will be my Hitchcock on on the record. And I'm like, uh, I said, Ex explain that to me. And basically what Alan says, you know, Alfred Hitchcock put himself in his movie, subtly, subtle character. So well, I, I always appear on, on every record I make in some capacity, <laughs> right? Even if it's just playing a tambourine or something. And in what I thought was very cool about A Valid Path was that one note from David Gilmore that basically says, Hi, I'm David Gilmore. <laughs> um, yeah, he was very gracious about doing that. Yeah. And, uh, it's called Return to Tunguska. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's based on a a theory that, uh, well, it's based on a, on a true, true to life event in, in Russia or somewhere in uh, Siberia. A huge uh, meteor dropped out of the sky. And uh, I just imagine this snowy landscape with the meteor in, uh, in the middle of a, a field. I think we've kind of captured that. So. Okay, another question? Here we go. Hi there. Hi, I'm Dawn. Hi. Um, I've always been a fan of your music, but never a fan that my husband was. And uh, when he passed away of pancreatic cancer in September 2020, uh, my brother reminded me of Blue Blue Sky to me. And I cannot tell you how many times I played that song and how it helped me through that time of my life. And I just want to express my appreciation for you for that and for myself. Second, wait, 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 wait. Blue, blue sky too, uh, and maybe everyone else that it's helped who's lost a loved one. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really surprised that usually at some point in a Q and A session like this, somebody says. What about Dark Side of the Moon and The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> and, uh, oh, well, there goes my question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, did, I did one of these with uh, uh, another producer called Bob Ezra, who worked with Floyd and I was going to And uh, the adjudicator said, oh, the guy doing my story. We have time for one more question, and then the question was, tell us about how certain we're in as well. And Bob said, that cannot be the last question. <laughs> Brilliant idea. But I'm surprised no one's mentioned No one's really, really mentioned Pink Floyd in a big way. Most, most of the, uh, these Q&As, most people want to know about Pink Floyd, what happened. I can't convert my question, but that's pretty good. Um, first hey, of all, how are you? That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely incredible. You're so, oh, we're so happy to have you in your program. You're a, a true inspiration to every musician and every person on this coach. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was recently asked to, uh, on Facebook to post my 20 most influential albums that made me, and I, I recanted a story that my brother, who's on the boat, I was like six years old, 
and he put on Alan Parsons project and I said that was the first time I said the production is amazing like it felt like I was in another world when I closed my eyes so thank you again for everything you do because your records are the soundtrack of our lives the thing that fascinates me is the concept of different vocalists and picking different vocalists and finding oh, Chris Rainbow on this one, finding Lenny's Architect on this one, having the, 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 the audacity to bring in somebody like Arthur Brown. So what was the process and did you do an audition process? Are there other versions of the songs that we might be able to hear one day with other singers? Or in the age of tape, I know there wasn't playlisting, so we might have lost that stuff. But what was the process of casting your records? Uh, it, it, it became a, a, a trademark. We, we, we would have uh, you know, no two consecutive songs would be sung by the same, the same person. Um, but I enjoyed that, that, uh, that aspect of it. Um, there are uh, no instances that, I, that I'm aware of that where we, we chose the wrong, the wrong singer. Not at least in the project. It's maybe a, maybe a, in later years on Freudiana, for example, we did uh, we did have to replace a vocalist. But uh, no, we, we we were very lucky. Uh, just just having that that feeling. What, what about Gary Brooker for this one? Yes. What about? Uh, but did you have in mind for Limelight, or, or was it always Gary Brooker in mind for Limelight, or was it, you know? Not, not, not until we recorded the track. Yeah, but uh, no, he did a great job. God bless him. Gary Brooker. And I, have a, and I have a very silly point five question. So you mentioned that your first experience working with the Beatles was at Abbey Road Studios. I'm really... It was actually at Apple. Not Apple Studios, sorry. A, A, A. Um, I've always been obsessed with this, but I've never gotten a true question. What was Magic Alex's console like? Did you, I've heard crazy stories that it was like Radio Shack and stuff was frying and things were crazy. What was it like? It, it just didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> How big was it? It, it, was, uh, it was allegedly sold uh, in, in the electronics shops uh, in the the uh, last street area of London, which it was famous for at the time. I think it fetched 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> was, he, was he as weird as, as everybody? Un unlike, unlike one of the, uh, what I would call the, the wraparound uh, Abbey Road console, oh. that, that, that was sold uh, a few years back for $1.8 million. Oh. Maybe it was pounds, but I sold it. Well, again, thank you so much, Alan. You are uh, always, always an inspiration. We probably have time for a couple more questions. Again, I know some of you brought uh, stuff to ask Alan to sign. We'll be taking care of all of that at the photo experience uh, with Alan, which will be in Bliss Lounge. I'll find out the exact uh, time for that, but please, please come to that uh, for the signage. One o'clock. One o'clock. I'm Michael Marks. I'm from Massachusetts, Boston, but I live in Nashville now, so I have an opportunity to see all these unbelievable great bands, typically at the Ryan. I hope you're still producing, because I just saw a band called Burrs, E-E-R-S, and they're just absolutely amazing. I'd like you to produce their next album so that I could enjoy it. <laughs> what What's that name? Beers, B E E R S, from Asheville, and they just blew me away. Uh, no. What what kind is what style is it? Uh, frog rock. No, no. I'll check it out. Thank, Thank you. you, Alan. In your time throughout throughout your career, like everyone, we're all trying to. Like many of us here, um, I can speak for most of us on the on this side of the microphone or this side of the console. We're all navigating a career in music, in the music business. In all of your time, if there's one lesson, just one lesson you can tell a young Alan Parsons, what would that be? Um, I, th I think 
one, one mistake I made early on was, was, was uh, not having the necessary experience to say something to a, a, a musician. No, I, I was talking about guitar chords. He was a, you know, a top session player. No, I am just a 19 year old kid so trying, to, trying to learn something from a, from a musician. But uh, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. when it's appropriate to do so. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I think, essentially, uh, my, my career blossomed when I didn't keep my mouth shut. So I started actually saying, well, hey, that guitar is out of tune, why don't you redo that? Why don't you sing that line again? You know, that kind of so, um, it, it, producing a record is, is, is very much like uh, doing a jigsaw puzzle. Finding the right elements to that work together. Uh, I mean, I, I to this day enjoy it hugely. Yeah. Just uh, directing you guys, you know, turning it from turning it from a, a kind of a, a noisy mess into something that makes sense. Uh, All right, this will be the last question, so make it a good one, my man. Okay, it's a